Today, we'll be sharing news about the stars we've lost in the past 24 hours. And as always, we'll also feature today's top headlines. Immortal News serves as your daily source for obituary news of individuals who have significantly contributed to society. We carry out our responsibilities with dignity, without exaggeration, and with honesty. To support our work, please hit the like button. It means a lot. Thank you. Number 8. Terry Levine, a pioneering player in the world of exploitation cinema, passed away at the age of 90, accompanied by his family in Inglewood, New Jersey. With a 70-year career, he made an unforgettable mark on the film industry as the chairman of Aquarius Releasing. He was crucial in promoting and distributing a wide range of films that have now become cult classics, including Bruce Lee Fights Back from the Grave and Dr. Butcher Medical Deviant. Operating from an office above the Selwyn Theater on West 42nd Street in New York, his expertise resided in his innovative marketing techniques for low-budget American features, as well as his ability to rebrand and promote films to appeal to grindhouse and drive-in audiences. His work on films such as The Beyond, rebranded as Seven Doors of Death, and Cannibal Ferox, promoted as Make Them Die Slowly, demonstrated his talent for sensational advertising, including memorably handing out barf bags for Dr. Butcher Medical Deviant. His role in popularizing martial arts films in the United States, following Bruce Lee's death, with titles such as Goodbye Bruce Lee and Fist of Fear, Touch of Death, demonstrated his effect on film distribution and audience involvement during the 1970s and 1980s. Aside from his professional achievements, his reputation is defined by his unrivaled understanding of the appeal of exploitation cinema and his unwavering commitment to entertaining audiences. He survived by his wife, Sarah, daughter, Rachel, grandchildren, Charlotte and Clifford, and sister, Molly. When reflecting on his career, Levine once remarked on the consistency of his projects. They were always completed on a tight budget, but turned a profit. His contributions to movies will never be forgotten. Tributes to Terry Levine Number 7. Aleta Bezaidenhout, a renowned South African actress, passed away at the age of 76. She was recognized for her numerous responsibilities and contributions to the arts over the course of a decades-long career. Born in Nairobi, Kenya, she polished her skill at the University of Cape Town, where she studied under renowned teachers. She shone brightly in the 1970s, drawing audiences at Cape Town's Space Theater with plays that were both challenged and thrilled. Her appearances spanned the Performing Arts Councils, where she received praise for her roles in Dreisusters Tui and Oscar in Africa, demonstrating her range and depth as an actor. Aside from acting, she was an accomplished author and director with works like Time of Footsteps and Angel in a Dark Room adding to her artistic legacy. Her career, which includes roles in Lied van die Lapop and In My Country, demonstrates her brilliance and dedication to her trade. Her achievements were recognized with various prizes, including the Dalro and FNB Vita Awards for Best Actress, solidifying her place as a key figure in South African theater and film. Her performance in the Afrikaans adaptation of Bertolt Brecht's Mutter Courage and Ihr Kinder was especially remarkable, demonstrating her ability to fascinate and affect audiences. Amrel Marias, Western Cape Minister of Cultural Affairs and Sport, commented on her effect, describing her as a brilliant presence and highlighting her contributions to the development of South African culture. 
As the arts community mourns her passing, her legacy as an inspirational actor, playwright, and director lives on, leaving an everlasting effect on the worlds of theater and film. Tributes to Aletta Bezidenhout Number 6. Steve Wright, a respected BBC Radio 1 and Radio 2 announcer, noted for his contributions to radio broadcasting over four decades, passed away at the age of 69. His passing, which has been sincerely grieved by family, friends, colleagues, and millions of listeners, signals the end of an era in British radio. His inventive programming and engaging attitude made him a popular figure with audiences, and a respected voice in the industry. Beginning his career in the 1970s, he immediately became a radio fixture, noted for his afternoon shows that combined music, interviews, and entertainment in a way that was both innovative and enjoyable. His talent extended beyond radio as he hosted television series such as Top of the Pops, demonstrating his versatility as a broadcaster. His family reported his death on February 12th 2024, highlighting his lifelong passion for healthy broadcasting and his role as a valued component of the UK radio environment. Tributes flooded in from across the BBC and beyond, with colleagues like Sarah Cox and Jeremy Vine expressing shock and sadness at the loss of such a friendly, amusing, and valuable member of the Radio 2 family. BBC Director General Tim Davey commended Wright as a passionate and innovative broadcaster who was recently awarded an MBE for services to radio. His impact on the business was enormous, influencing how radio programs are created and consumed by listeners. Throughout his brilliant career, he remained a dedicated and inspiring figure. His memory will live on via the innumerable broadcasts that touch the hearts of a nation. As we reflect on his incredible career, we honor Steve Wright, whose voice, humor, and generosity touched our lives and made an unforgettable impression on the world of broadcasting. Tributes to Steve Wright Number 5. David Boulet, a culinary visionary and nouveau cuisine pioneer, passed away at the age of 70. His influence extended far beyond the walls of his Tribeca restaurants, where he reinvented lighter French cuisine with a focus on health and community. His career began with notable spells in Europe, where he sharpened his abilities among famous chefs and grew when he returned to New York City. He established his eponymous restaurant as a beacon of culinary excellence, receiving four stars from the New York Times and numerous James Beard Foundation honors. His dedication to pure ingredients and inventive cooking methods has gained him international accolades, including TripAdvisor's Best Restaurant in the United States title. He was a pioneer in providing tasting menus and bespoke dining experiences for people with specific health needs. His response to the 9-11 attacks, which included more than a million lunches for relief workers, demonstrated his commitment to community duty. He received multiple accolades for his contributions to the culinary world, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from Columbia University's Celiac Disease Center and recognized as a Japanese cuisine goodwill ambassador. His legacy includes contributions to healthy eating, as evidenced by businesses like Boulet Test Kitchen and Boulet at Home, which continue to innovate and educate about nutrition. Tributes to David Boulet
Number 4. Sharon Nordgren, a committed American politician and Democratic member of the New Hampshire House of Representatives, passed away at the age of 80. Serving Grafton County from 1988 until her death in 2024, her dedication to her constituents and tireless efforts in state politics established her as a prominent figure in New Hampshire legislative history. Throughout her career, she was known for her activism and support for important causes, which influenced the lives of many people in her community and beyond. In 2023, she made news by endorsing Joyce Craig and Cindy Warmington for governor of New Hampshire, demonstrating her continued involvement in molding the state's political future, even as she grew older. Her legacy is one of ardent service, marked by her unwavering commitment to the betterment of her state and its citizens. Her achievements to the New Hampshire House of Representatives over the last four decades have left an everlasting stamp on the legislative landscape, garnering her the respect and admiration of colleagues, voters, and political observers. As we honor Sharon Nordgren, we celebrate her life and talents recognizing her as a prominent player in New Hampshire politics. Her efforts have paved the way for future generations, establishing a high standard of dedication, integrity, and compassion in public service. Tributes to Sharon Nordgren Number 3. Alain Dorval, the iconic French voice behind Sylvester Stallone and a renowned performer in the field of French dubbing, passed away at the age of 77. Dorval, whose real name was Alain Berger, was not only known for his visible acting roles, but also for his distinct voice, which brought several characters to life for French-speaking viewers. He was well known for dubbing Sylvester Stallone in blockbuster series like Rocky and Rambo, giving these characters a voice that became synonymous with valor and perseverance in French cinema. Aside from Stallone, his versatile voice adorned the characters performed by Nick Nolte in 48 Hours and Danny Aiello in Radio Days. His talents spread to the cartoon and gaming sectors where he portrayed Disney's Cat Hibbler since 1992, Tiger in the Bible series, and Le Gros Le Tigno in Once Upon a Time, Space, and The Life. Furthermore, his portrayal of Lex Luthor in Superman Angel of Metropolis and contributions to Les Guignols de l'Info demonstrated his influence across other entertainment forms. His fight with cancer in his latter years did not eclipse his legacy as a pillar of the French dubbing industry. His death marks the end of an era for fans and colleagues who valued his work and the emotional depth he gave to his parts. His personal life, which includes his marriage to actress Dominique Dumont and his role as father to politician Aurore Berger, demonstrates the extent of his impact beyond the entertainment sector. Tributes to Elaine Dorval Number 2. Kurt Hamren, an icon of Swedish football, noted for his extraordinary agility and quickness, passed away at the age of 89. He was a prominent player in the 1958 World Cup, helping Sweden reach the finals with his exceptional talent on the right side. His amazing strike against West Germany in the semifinals will go down in football history as a testament to his incredible pace and control. Beyond the national stage, his club career prospered in Italy, where he became a hero for Fiorentina and later Milan, winning various awards such as the European Cup Winners' Cup and Serie A crowns. Born in Stockholm, 
His career began with AIK, where he soon established himself as a prolific goal scorer. His move to Juventus heralded the start of a great career in Italian football. But it was with Fiorentina that he truly left his mark, equaling Gabriel Batistuta's record of 203 goals for the club. Despite his on-field flamboyance, he was known off the field for his reserve demeanor, which further contributed to his allure. After retiring from football, he settled in Florence, working as a scout for Milan, and staying a popular figure in both Sweden and Italy. His 1955 marriage to Marianne and their five children highlighted a life full of both athletic accomplishments and familial joys. Tributes to Kurt Hamron Today's top headlines. News 1. In a harrowing incident at Texas Lakewood Church, Janessi Yvonne Moreno, 36, launched an attack with an AR-style rifle while accompanied by her young son, causing panic among worshipers. The assault occurring between services at the megachurch led by Joel Osteen led to a tense exchange of gunfire with off-duty officers, resulting in Moreno's death. Tragically, Moreno's seven-year-old son sustained a critical head injury during the incident. Authorities are investigating the motive behind the attack, delving into Moreno's mental health history and prior disputes. The church, a beacon for many, faced a terrifying ordeal, highlighting the ever-present concern of violence in places of worship. The community stands in shock as they rally around the victims and each other in the aftermath of this senseless act. News 2. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has been hospitalized for a non-surgical procedure related to an emergent bladder issue, prompting the cancellation of his anticipated trip to Brussels. The procedure, performed under general anesthesia, has led to Austin's third hospitalization since his prostate cancer diagnosis last December. Despite this setback, officials anticipate a brief hospital stay, asserting that Austin will resume his duties by Tuesday with the aid of classified communications systems at the hospital. This medical episode unfolds as Austin was set to lead pivotal discussions in support of Ukraine and engage with NATO defense ministers, now shifted to a virtual format. The Pentagon reassures that Austin, who has faced health challenges since his cancer diagnosis, is expected to fully recover, continuing to serve in his critical role amidst ongoing global and domestic challenges. News 3. As the popularity of pickleball surges across the United States, so does the incidence of related injuries, with a startling 200% increase in bone fractures over the last two decades. This rising trend, highlighted by an analysis from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, underscores the hidden risks of the sport known for its friendly competition and accessible play. With players ranging from 4.8 million in 2021 to 8.9 million in 2023, the sport's rapid growth has brought to light the need for increased awareness and preparedness among participants. Experts recommend proper warm-up, appropriate footwear, and learning safe falling techniques to mitigate risks. As the sport continues to attract a diverse group of enthusiasts, ensuring safety measures and promoting informed participation become crucial to preserving the joy and health benefits of pickleball. News 4 Ashley Park has resumed filming for the fourth season of Emily in Paris on Netflix after recovering from septic shock. The actress, known for her role as Mindy Chen on the show, announced her return to work via Instagram, expressing excitement about rejoining her colleagues. She shared images of a rack of stilettos and a sparkly robe with her character's name, indicating her readiness to step back into Mindy's world. Park also extended gratitude towards her co-stars and crew for their support and warm welcome. The production of Emily in Paris Season 4 has been ongoing in Paris for several weeks, with Park's return anticipated by fans and the show's team alike. News 5. Amber Dowding, known for her work in the entertainment industry, has recently shared health updates with her followers on Instagram. The actress was urgently taken to the hospital due to a severe issue with one of her eyes, alarming fans and friends alike. 
Initially diagnosed with superior vital cellulitis, a condition causing infective swelling around the eye, doubting symptoms persisted despite treatment. Her condition, characterized by intense swelling, itchiness, blurred vision, and headaches, led to further medical consultations. Despite being later suggested it might be a sty or blepharitis, doubting remains uncertain about her diagnosis. As she continues to seek answers and undergo treatment, the entertainment community and her fans stand in support, hoping for her swift recovery and return to full health. Number one, Malika Rajput, a gifted singer-actor, passed away at the age of 35. Her death was strongly felt when she was discovered in her house in Sultanpur, Uttar Pradesh, in circumstances that have left her family, friends, and fans devastated. Her career, which began with her performance in the 2014 crime comedy Revolver Rani, starring Kanjana Ranau, and continued with her appearance in the music video for Shan's song, Yara Tuja, demonstrated her versatility and passion for the arts. She was born into the entertainment industry and had a promising future with her performances resonating with many people. Her premature death has left a vacuum in the hearts of people who appreciated her work and valued her spirit. The circumstances surrounding her death, as detailed by her heartbroken mother, have left her family searching for answers, emphasizing the necessity of mental health awareness and support for those in distress. As we commemorate Malika Rajput, we recognize her legacy in the Indian cinema and music industries and celebrate her accomplishments. Despite her brief career, her skill and the moments she produced on screen will continue to inspire and entertain. Our thoughts are with her family during this extremely difficult time, and we send our heartfelt condolences to her loved ones. She'll remember a life that, albeit cut short, was filled with artistic expression and the pursuit of creativity. Her story serves as a reminder of the pressures that people in the spotlight experience, as well as the importance of compassion and understanding while dealing with the difficulties they face. Tributes to Malika Rajput